Welcome back to another episode of Do These Albums Have Any Skips? Today we're going to be going through 16 different rap albums from the likes of Drake, Travis Scott, even Billy Woods, and deciding if there's a track that we do not like. And if you guys are new to NFR Podcast, please smash the subscribe button. We're doing content like this on a weekly basis. Baloo, let's start off with the first album. Let's get on with this with Views by Drake. And to be honest with you, I love this record. Maybe it's because I junked it so much in high school, but... I have special times associated with this album, and also I feel like Drake gave you some of his best ever R&B cuts with stuff like Redemption or Feel No Ways, some of his best ever rapping with Western Road Flows or Views, even looking at like the dance hall stuff like Controller or One Dance. I'm a fan of everything on here, and I know it's a hot take, but it's skipless to me, even though well, it's 20 listen, songs. Okay, because I knew we were probably going to come in here and say that it was skipless because I know how much you enjoy this yeah. album, but I'm not going to lie to you, bro. Like, I'm never in the car. And Hotline Bling comes on, and I'm always going to no, skip it. An L, I'm always going to skip Hotline Bling. And listen, I don't think it's a bad song by any means. It's just that I've gotten annoyed at the hook low-key, bro. I mean, how many times do I have to hear it for me to like be like desensitized to it? And I mean, at this point, even stuff like One Dance or a Controller, the bigger records, or yeah. even something like Too Good. You've gotten sick of them? I haven't gotten sick of them because okay, I good. like them. I like them in different settings. But Hotline Bling, I mean, I just feel like it's a bit too bubblegum for me at this point, And I've heard it way too much. I'm so still a huge it's fan my of only song. skip on. Like um, honestly, I feel like With You or Faithful are like some of the more mediocre ones on there. But, but I like Faithful. I don't even skip those. Yeah, because Drake's performance, especially in the middle of Faithful, when he goes into like more of like the melodic bag with his singing, I really like that. And I don't know. I don't think it's a skip. But let's keep going on with this. Let's go into Birds in the Trap, Sing McKnight by Travis Scott. And I mean, when you look at this album, it may be one of the track lists from Travis Scott that has like the most replay value for me. Everything from the ends to coordinates to guidance, um, lose. There's just so many quality tracks on here, and I don't have any skips. If I'm I being have honest. a skip on here, and I feel like what it comes down to with this is like this is like the loosest Travis Scott album in the sense that there's nothing really like holding everything together besides maybe the consistency in the production. But it's just like when I when I look at first take. It's like the worst use of Travis Scott's autotune. It sounds super synthetic to me, even though I like the dizzying production and the sample that, you know, brought it, it was brought into that. But it's not to a point where, like, I'm rushing to my phone to fucking skip the but song. But that's what I was saying, but though, it's like, that, like... I never listened to that album from start to finish, so if I'm going to be listening to it, I'd rather go to coordinate. Yeah, you're not a start I'd to rather go to it? guidance. I'd rather go to other songs on there. Well, I mean, there's just so much quality in there, like Beebs in the Trap, Wonderful, even there Sweet is. Sweet. But uh, all like, I have is first back. take, because even Bryson Tiller is so underwhelming on that to me. I mean, I understand where you're coming from, but it's still not a skip for me. In the regards of the album, I like doing Birds in the Trap from start to finish. I think that it has a ton of replay value All in right. that regard. But let's uh, keep let's going keep on, on going. Next up, we have the Carter 3 by Lil Wayne. And you know my controversial take on this, bro. I think Lollipop is hot garbage. I'm going to stand even by spend that time on, Yeah, I don't even want to spend time on the take. You've talked about the autotune. Like, you've talked about it way too many times. It just before. sounds so dated. I, I just don't even care anymore. Uh, my skip is Pussy Monster, to be honest with you. I went back and um, I know in the free smoke we were talking about Pussy Monster and like, I said, yeah, you know, it's a decent track. It's all right. And I do like the production, but bro. bro get like, out of here, bro. Don't even fucking try to defend it, man. I'm not. Well, you don't even let me finish my thoughts before I get into this. I don't like the song. Um, I went back and like, the, the thing I picked up with my mixing headphones is that you hear like Wayne eating like eating the box like while he's delivering his hook he's literally and it's like, rapping Whoa. about like I need to like eat the box to stay alive you know what I mean it's like Wayne's horn dog play on like the cookie monster <laughs> I and know. uh it's pretty bad another skip that I think I'm gonna get a lot of flack for is Lala bro why what's wrong with um you? I don't like the whole like child choir I feel like that weakens the production you also have bars in there from Wayne like I'm the shit get the fuck out of my toilet and then Go back to that Busta verse, bro. His lyrics are even worse than Wayne's. Yeah, it's really it's not, no, it's, it's not really the, poorly the written. The sample flip was it's fire. badly produced. No, I don't um, agree. I, I so, think, so you have three. Skips I have three on the Carter skips on the Carter three, which so is like, crazy. But this is what this is the interesting thing is that I feel like just because an album has skips doesn't mean that it can be a classic album. Because when you look at the highlights, when you look at the impact of the album, it's a classic record. But it won't be the first time on this list that I have another classic album that has skips to me. Okay, well, the Carter 3 has skips for me, but I don't yeah. agree with Lala. I definitely don't agree with Go that Go back, one. trust. All right, let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to Jackman. All right, so this released in 2023, um, Jack Harlow's comeback record from Come Home, The Kids Miss You, and it's short, it's concise, um, there's kind of a sort of motive behind it, and it's Jack rapping. I'm happy that there's no, like, you know, blades of grass on here. You know, that's really not my vibe. So yeah. how do you like the album so far? I don't know. I feel like I want to tip my hat to Jackman, bro. You know, he made a decent, straight, full-on rap album. And going back to it again, I feel like there were less skips than I remembered there being. There was actually um, replay value here. I actually enjoyed my revisit on Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I mean, Gang Gang, I think, is obviously a skip. 
from that really awkward sample to the lack of like nuance within the storytelling um that one didn't do it for me and you know what's crazy is that when we dropped the review for it everyone was flaming us because they loved gang Gang. everyone was like if kendrick made this song you guys would be fucking like bowing down to it like bro there's no way if kendrick would drop this song i wouldn't listen to the rest of the album but i mean regardless (laughs) though if you go through the sample flip is really weird it feels like this old casper the ghost-esque type like (laughs) production and i'm just like i feel like i'm in like a sweat dream you know like it's just it's fucking weird it gets yeah it gets creepy not only that but like the way that like jack harlow leads in the bars are just it's there's no like there's no storytelling there's involved. no context yeah there's given. no context to everything like it was kind of like this compressed storytelling song that listen if it was fleshed out well it could have been a really solid song yeah. and it could have been one of best one of the best songs in jack carlo's discography but it, it just it wasn't just felt like he was reading properly. out like headlines of horror stories that went down in his like hometown but really it was about like his his group of friends um in kentucky but yeah another skip i have is no enhancers um, which is one of the popular songs. I feel yeah, like not great. this is one that like was probably a leftover from Come Home, The Kids Miss You that he just jammed on there. That was kind of the vibe I got from it. You know it. what I say this, though? Denver is incredible. Denver is really good. Denver's a really good They don't good love song. it as another one that I yeah, love. Absolutely. There's um, some really solid heat on this Shout out album. Jack. He fucking showed out for that one, bro. I'm not going to lie. lie. Um, but next up, we have 2014 Forest Hills Drive and another example of an album that I've called the classic that I think does have skips. What do you have on So from intro to no role models, bro, you're getting a fucking flawless run. But then you get hello. And to me, there's there's no excuses to be made for this, bro. You have like J. Cole sipping over a girl over the phone. And his singing is so out of tune over this weak beat. There, there's really no there's no saving the track. In yeah, my I opinion. don't like hello all that much. I was debating it, though. I'm like, is hello going to be the deciding factor of 2014 is like skipless or not in my opinion yeah. and it low key is yeah going back to hello, you were like defending you're, it in the free smoke that we like, did though I, I i was but like in the context of a skip because i could understand it in like the album narrative and like yeah. why it needs to be there right in the track list it is merited just because of the progression of j cole it's just not through 2014 though. yeah but if hello comes on like i'm not going back towards that and even at that when you compare that let's say to something like a tale of two cities or let's say a fire squad or a gomd a wet dreams um a no role models it doesn't even like pale in comparison to be honest also with note to self i'm not gonna lie I, I love like j cole following the tradition of the rock where you have these outros like jay-z and kanye have done before where he's thanking everybody that helped on the album yeah, but, but I don't it's really 14 c- minutes bro I'm not gonna play the song yeah. I've heard the speech once I don't have to hear it a million times I know, you know but like I didn't I didn't come into this episode and like start judging the skits and like the outros and stuff I think you kind of like I, I don't know I feel like it's a bit unfair you know yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you but like it's kind of a given you're not gonna listen to a 14 minute Obviously. like outro that's thanking everyone that worked on the album so alright I think 2014 has skips Lou what do you have next next up we have Hendrix by Future and this is that like soft and seductive future where even though he's going into an r&b bag he's still as misogynistic as ever on songs like my collection where he raps about like if i hit it once she's part of my collection you know like you're getting that kind of future i had to be a lot um, of skips on here listen man i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest with you like i think hendrick has really solid tracks like coming out strong or solo solo. yeah you have like that type of like bouncy hazy sort of future that locks into one flow super contagious hooks as well but let me read my list. <laughs> keep quiet. Horrible. I didn't have that one. Interesting. You didn't have keep quiet. I, I keep hated quiet. the production on there. Keep going. It was though. like this like futuristic, like dirty sort of like chip tune synth sort of thing going on. And I'm like, no, this doesn't sound good. Damage out of here. I like damage. Wow. I like that. <laughs> you like damage. We're, on we're here? gonna have different skips on here, but keep going. Jeez, what do you have? I have use me on here. Come on. Are you serious? I like Use Me Too, bro. That, that was a pretty deep song, bro, from Future. I liked it. it the, the execution is poor. Like, his singing is so off. Like, I've given him he's, so much He's just not that great of a singer overall in the yeah, project, Yeah, but that's what though, I'm saying. Is that there's if I there's to catchy be... hooks here and there and some deep content, okay, but listen, keep going. If you have Testify and, like, please tell me you have Testify. I have Testify Okay, thank God. I have thank Fresh God. Air as a skip. Okay. I have New Illuminati Okay, and that was skip. my last skip. Yeah, And I have You the Baddest with uh, Nikki as the outro as a skip. I didn't mind that. Also, um, what else? Incredible, bro. Like that stuttering chorus, it sounded like a DJ remixed his vocals, and then he has these whiny inflections. Um, it just it makes it hard to like make his emotions become translated when you have such poor vocal inflections. And that was kind of the vibe with this project. And it's cool to see that so many people back this album, but it's overrated to me, bro. I think it so speaks to skips. a certain type of listener. That's why he dropped Future and Hendrix, but I'm not sure if I'm that type of listener. But you want to continue going with this? Let's slew. keep on going with Drip Harder by Lil Baby and Gunna and it's too bad that we're probably not going to get another one of these collab albums because I did enjoy this one a lot, bro. There's a lot of slappers on here. Yeah. Um, you know, from 
never recover to drip too hard off way v long business like, is business business there's, there's a, business too yeah there's a lot of major slappers on here but i have two skips on this I'll talk. i have let me see i have three skips bro okay interesting we're playing in the same territory yeah. close friends is a skip I'm never going back to Close Friends. I didn't mind Close Friends. I, I and I know it's one of the most popular off of the album, but like it kind of feels like a Disney tune from like Little Baby, where it's like super bubblegum. We were close friends, and then like <laughs> I, 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 I just I, I, I can't go back to it. And then uh, Seals Pills, that's another skip for me. I didn't like that. So we have different skips. So on here I have um, Deep End, where it sounds like Baby is on the verge of tears, yet he's rapping about like being in the field with a stick. So. Like that did not match. I didn't mind it. it, it didn't I match like the flow on didn't match the sentiment of like the writing. You know what I mean? So of all songs for Baby to be emotional on, I don't know why you chose that one. Then you have Underdog, which is a skip to me. Um, Baby sort of rapping off beat. Gunna's vocals are a bit too stretched out. And then My Jeans, my hottest take wow. with Young Thug That's is a skip to me. Why? Um, is it the Young Thug verse? Bro, there's like these backing vocals that follow everybody's verse. And it's just like this dark cloud that harbors over the song where you're like, why is this here? It? it was actually one of my favorites. So when I was, it, bro. it was one of my favorites a couple of years wow. ago when the song came out. That's interesting. So yeah, three skips for me on that. All right. One, interesting. Okay. Let's three, keep on running this me. though. Next up, we have Scaring the Hose by JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown. And I'll be honest with you. I never expected to love this album as much as I do, bro. It's like, album of the year for me so far. Yeah, bro. And it's like... It's not something I'm going to listen to every day, no, but no, no, no. when I do go back to it, I have a fucking hell of a time. Oh, it's super fun to go back to it. I'm being honest with you. And I was trying to be a bit of an asshole with this album because I was like, there's can be that I don't like. Like, there has to be one song I don't There's enjoy. one I was debating. What about you? Did you find the skip? No, I didn't find a skip on here. No? What did you find? I was debating God Loves You just because of oh, like, hear me out. Come on. It's not a skip, okay, but okay. it's just like... It's in. The, it's a very intense listen, bro. I know it's an intense listen, like, but it's fire, though, bro. You like, put that on in the gym, and like you're just fucking. You're going crazy some with that. Fucked up biblical references in that. I, I know, but that's what's fire about it. Is yeah. that I fight like I like the way like Danny Brown plays on like the whole sexual references. Like pussy being wider than Noah's Ark. You're like holy shit, yeah, but bro. I, I, like I can't pun. play this anywhere. No, I know you, you know? can't play it anywhere. But I mean, like if you want to get in a zone, I mean. There's a certain vibe for this track. Yeah, I mean, what kind of zone is that, bro? Tell me. Listen, at what the kind end of the zone day, are you getting when Bumping God Loves You? At the end of the day, I do feel like this is an album that merits the start to finish for me. I do enjoy it. I said it in my review how I still love something like God Loves Me because I like the concept of the verse. Um, do I think it's fucked up? Yeah. But sometimes you like fucked up lyrics. And even I mean, that mix of like gospel and dance for the production. I love the choir as well on it. So it can't be a skip. Bro. No, it's there's no quality. skips on this. Yeah. Okay. So Scaring the Hose has no skips. But let's go on to Invasion of Privacy by Cardi B. And this is one of like the biggest rap albums of all time commercially. There's so many songs in here that have gone platinum or even diamond. I think it's one of the only hip hop albums with two diamond songs in here, right? Yeah. I think think it's yeah every song is platinum and there's two diamond songs with bodak yellow i like it and there might be another one that's fucking diamond that i'm blanking out on but nonetheless this is just one of those albums that year after year i can't fathom the praise this album gets bro like i feel like it's it's a, it's a very weird switch where all of the critics like it but none of the community does yeah it's like who's who's paying these critics? I feel bro, like it's. I feel like to it's, write these reviews. I, I, I feel like it's a bit like it's it's aged poorly to a certain extent. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Um, going back, it's nice to see that like Cardi B was actually trying to rap on this album, though. I will give her that. Are the raps stuff good? like Bickenhead, for example? Yeah, but Bickenhead is gonna be a, a skip. skip for me. What? Yeah, yeah, I like Bickenhead. No, I don't like Bickenhead. I don't like Moneybag. Um, I don't like She Bad with well, YG. That YG that, that was a weak. performance is really weak. Drip. I'm um, going back to it. I honestly, I liked it back then. Like I was remember when we were young. Like this song. You Come on the, when, I, when I was younger, dripping, yeah. Drip, drip. Yeah, when I was younger, yeah, it was cool. Like, it sounds it was just like a catchy. cheesy, like, fucking high school sports team chant, you know? It's like, not that bad. Um, Bodak Yellow is not a skip for me. I like it. It's not a skip for me either. I same. Think, I think those are super solid songs. But yeah, I have around five to six skips on here. What do you got? I have about, like, th four skips. I had Drip where, you know, Cardi and the Migos are literally saying Drip over a hundred times, literally, which is pretty crazy. Then I have something like uh, Best Life with Chance the Rapper. He really didn't have a good performance. I didn't on mind that the joint. chance the rapper performance, to be honest. The with end you. of that song, it was okay because he's not doing like he's not doing any singing or anything. He's just rapping. He's just like it's a standard. He's not rapping of... all throughout it, bro. Um, also, right. Moneybag was an L for me too. 
Um, yeah, just a very weak album that, again, I just can't fathom the love that it gets. Well, but... I think it was probably carried by the anthems. That was yeah, probably Yeah, probably, it. probably. And, like, people have that perception of it, like, whoa, we couldn't hear this album. You know, sorry, we, we, we couldn't go anywhere without hearing this album. So maybe yeah, that it was definitely a big hit. But let's go on now to DiCaprio 2 by Jid. And Jid went to work on this album, bro. Like, he proved to us that he was truly one of the most gifted MCs on here. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was a cool showcase of his talents. And... I feel like with Jit's catalog, it's so rare to find a song that, that I won't like, but I do have a skip on it. Yeah, I have Tide here that I'm not a big fan of. And why do you think it's a skip? skip. Uh, well, first of all, I'm not a fan of like Jid's harmonizing and his singing. I think it's a bit weak, to be honest with you. And if you want to kind of like compare it to something else, you could consider like a Cody Blue, for example, where that's a he lot leveled better. Up. Exactly. So like there has been an upgrade on here. Plus, I'm not that big of a fan of LMA and Black on this song either. I just feel like... If you want to listen to a good Black and JID collaboration, you have 8701 off of the Never Story. I feel like that's much better where, like, you do have the harmonizing, but it's done in another way. So, I mean, for the most part, I do think that it's a near skipless album. Um, we went to the concert and the tour um, when he came through for DiCaprio 2, and we heard songs like 151 Rum Live and Off These Live, and it's just so much hype. Off the Zoinkies is incredible working out. Um, just lo just so much great Listen, stuff. Listen, bro, one skip out of 14 is a fucking W in my book, so I think that's, uh, that's pretty good. But let's go on now to the Black Album by Jay-Z. And listen, bro, this is an all-time great album. And if I had to name, like, my least favorite song, it would be Dirt Off Your Shoulder. Why? I don't know. It's just, like, it's one of those songs That's that was... That's a take. That's an anthem. It, it, it's an anthem. It was more of, like, you know, that club appealing song and more of, like, that song that was designated to be a hit. And it doesn't do much for me in comparison to something like a December 4th or an encore or a Lucifer, but... Arnold. Still, it's still pretty cool, though. Bro, Dirt Off Your Shoulder is still a, cool. It, I, I really like it as a song. I'm going to be honest with you. I've played that in the whip. Did you ever see uh, the speech that Obama had where he was literally doing like the, the movement of... Yeah, but that's cheesy. That was fire to see a president fucking... Like, the, the, the fact that a Jay-Z song had a president doing like a move from a song, that was pretty iconic. It's a bit bro. fromage, if I'm going to ask what, what makes it cheesy to you? I was like... Okay, we get it, bro. You know, but anyways, listen, I just, I find it, it just, cheesy. It was Obama, the... like, showing off his fucking hip-hop <laughs> yeah, knowledge, hey, bro. Uh, hey. Who doesn't, who, who doesn't <laughs> know Dirt Off Your Shoulder? I, if I... Hey, bro, not everyone in the world knows Dirt Off Your Shoulder, bro. Anyways, doesn't not matter. Not the fucking um, national no anthem. Okay, you're not going to argue me about a president. Okay, no skips. <laughs> no skips on that one. <laughs> right. Let's go on to one of our favorite albums of all time, The Money Store by Death Grips. Okay, so I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't revisited this album since our like, last reaction. Until, until this episode, right? Yeah, and uh, this is uh, this is quite the album. I'm, gonna not, I'm not going to lie to you. And we had conversations with people about it. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like, I, I do appreciate the meaning of the album. I do think it is an important album. And I understand why people do have it on all time lists and why they enjoy it. It's just not for me. Like, it's way too brash. It's in your face. And when it came to analyzing this album about the skips, it was more of like, what could I actually keep out of this album? You know, that I really do enjoy. So what did you keep out of the money store? That like, is I like keep? kind of bearable. To um, a certain extent. I would keep, I've seen footage. I, I liked uh, the subject matter on that one. I also, um, you know, like hustle bones and like that transformative instrumental, but there's some really songs. There's some songs I really don't like, but for example, fever AA, um, you have this Oof. like, futuristic industrial beat but mc ride's performance is so irritating bro it's worse than like mumble delivery in the sense that you can't make out what he's saying and it just, he just sounds like this drunk guy shouting from like the nosebleeds at a hockey game like you have no idea what he's saying and he just sounds angry and intoxicated. even something like fuck that for example i think is one of the worst songs off of the album it's just way too the aggressive. cage too yeah, system not... blower okay i'll tell you the two songs that i do have on this i don't want to shit on the album the entire episode. also hacker is pretty good i think hacker's that's the last, right. the last yeah, song yeah hacker's all right uh, even at that, I went back to Hacker and I'm like, not for me. I've seen footage. That's the most yeah. like, accessible song on the album. I think the community understands that. And Double Helix. Those are my only two songs where I'm like, all right. These are passable, but are I'll, passable. I'll still never play them. Uh, yeah, like I'll never really go towards it. So I guess this is more of a game of like, what do we keep rather than what yeah, do we skip? Exactly. So let's keep going on with Next this. Next up though, we have Crash Talk by Schoolboy Q. And listen, you get to start to see the cracks within this album once Q wants to go pop. For example, yeah. on something like Chopsticks, where you have one of the worst Travis Scott hooks, if not the worst, where he literally didn't have to do anything on here besides chopsticks. say Chopsticks, Chop, Chop. You know what? Kendrick actually wrote the hook. So he barely had to show up, bro, for this one. Yeah, um, I never knew Kendrick wrote that hook. Kendrick wrote kind the of hook a for Chops. Kendrick, I'm very gonna... weak hook, underwhelming. And then Q's verses are some of the most underwritten verses I've ever heard from him, bro. And I'm like, 
I'm never in the mood to hear Q get his freak on. Bro. No, yeah, it's you not know? for it's not also for me. another well, skip for me would have to be. Lies. Sorry, I have drunken lies as a skip. For lies me. is a skip. Drunk though with black is great. It's okay. No, it's a great fucking song, bro. I'm okay with it. Like I'm not going to crash talk for like more like those melodic ballads. I understand it's a bit more personal. It's a bit more heartfelt, but I'm just not that big of a fan of it. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to mm. you. I don't necessarily go back to the album and go to like something like Drunken Lies and even Chopsticks. I feel like there's probably three skips on here, but still, like I have been junking this album since 2019. I do think it's extremely underrated, but I do have skips on it. Absolutely. Okay. Next up, we have Capital Punishment by Big Pun. And listen, bro. This is just one of the best albums from the 90s that does not get enough love. Um, Big Pun's tongue twisters on this album, on something like Twins, bro. Fucking incredible. And I like the whole Little Italy thing that he does. Yes, yeah, bro. Genius. Um, but listen, just like Biggie's Ready to Die, you have one of those sex skits on Taster's Choice, <laughs> which is a funny skit because it's like two women fighting over like who gets to ride Big Pun's joystick. It's like one of those kind of vibes. <laughs> but it's funny, though. It's like, funny, th though. Th that's why I don't really skip it. Like, I mean... It's I'm awkward not... as fuck to listen to, like, with a crowd of people. But again, just like I wouldn't skip Fuck Me Interlude, I ain't skipping this one either, bro. I'm not even, like... I'm giving it the same treatment. I mean, listen, the only one that I would probably skip from the 90s that has, like, this sort of vibe is probably Pause for Porno. That's the only, like that one's like really like that one's deep you know you can't really do anything with that one so I mean so, uh, yeah but regardless you have all time classics on here like you were saying like Twins um even Boomerang's incredible um Fast Money uh there's so much great stuff on here man um the Dream Shatter uh still not a player with Fat Joe that's an incredible anthem as well so I think there's probably no skips on here no skips bro shout out to the porno skits um let's keep on <laughs> going though next up we have reject 2 by call me the machine and this is one of his most celebrated mixtapes it's seen as like one of those founding griselda mixtapes you know what i like the foundation yeah, you know what i liked about this project though is that i went back to it and i never picked up on this but do you realize how differently his vocals are mixed on this project in comparison to some of his newer stuff it's quite interesting like i feel like they've done a good job at kind of like enhancing conway's yeah. like let's say his the way that he projects his vocals and the way that he raps but i believe it's only 10 songs it's super concise it's short i don't have a single skip on this even the project. features all showed out from west side gun to sky zoo to mac homie everyone did their thing and i love the production because it has this 90 style boom bap but it's also very dark as you would expect from griselda so and the album cover is hard as fuck it is bro you have like the, i think we have uh, reject 2 actually but the alternative cover um in our vinyls over here so if you guys have not checked it out by conway the machine please go one ahead. one of griselda's so. best projects Absolutely. for sure but the last album that we have for today is going to be hiding places by billy woods and kenny siegel Smoky and Loki, a scary album bro this album is fucking incredible like the more and more i listen to it it might be my favorite billy woods album and i was a bit wary at first because the intro is called spongebob and i'm like this could go wrong very easily with no, a title no, like that good. but ends up taking like the perspective of a suicide bomber and you're just blown away by how intelligent he is with his concepts oh, he is. with his writing he makes every single line count i love songs in here like a day in a week in a year where he's sort of rapping about his poverty and really making us feel um the weight of what it's like um, to live in the circumstances he lived in. Not only that, but if you pay attention to the soundscape of the project, like I was saying before, it's very haunting. You have like this psych this dark psychedelic rock aspect to the production that fits Billy Woods' like cadence perfectly. And I feel like even from him, he does a good job at also implementing a bit of horrorcore within his uh, within his lyrics that kind of gets you in like sort of a, a creepy mood. You know, it's not it's not as like direct as something as let's say a relapse, for no. example, but it's very dark content matter. Like it kind of feels like he's crawling under Beneath your skin so do you have any skips on i have no skips on i here, don't have bro. any skips it's, either it's phenomenal and i can't wait to keep listening to it but yeah that's it it's gonna wrap up the episode today guys for do these albums have any skips let us know which songs would you skip from these albums and which albums should we include on the next time that we do this series thank you guys so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video and you're new here smash that subscribe button thank you guys and we'll catch you in the next one